Ladies and gentlemen, how are we all doing today? It's Liquid Hotshot. We're back here on Hearts of Iron 4 for our Millennium Dawn playthrough. As you guessed it, Poland. And yeah, hope you're enjoying your Sunday afternoon. And uh, looking forward to today's episode. In the last episode, we had some of the German and uh, British civilian in industries finish. So that's great. That's uh, that spiked our economy a little bit. And we did go ahead and do some network infrastructure here, which boosts, if for those of you who don't know, boosts your construction speed in that specific state by an additional 5%. So that's uh, great. We have bumped up that network infrastructure in all the states where we're industrializing heavy or we're getting heavy industrial investments into so looking at pomeralia uh, welts polska mazovia poldasi and galicia or galicia we did also then set off two additional sieves to be built in our capital state of mazovia as well as two additional office sectors uh, and then because we have just finally got our third generation multi-role fighters onto the production line which are obviously behind the curve by a long shot i think these is this is 1965 tech uh we do need the rubber and for that we queued up a synthetic refinery in uh, lower silesia we've already got one in there so that just ma makes sense on a on an industrial uh, standpoint got an extra uh investment offer from france now we were getting a bunch of look at this look at all this investment by france like they've just got money to throw at me and i'm, I'm loving it i'm here for it um but like what i'm concerned about is like they're they're not showing up in the influence thing so we're going to accept that and like so like those numbers just tick down i saw that in real time yet France numbers is not going up, so that's not a cause for concern, but it's just like, hmm, wonder what's going on there. I wonder, I wonder. We're going to do here. We're not going to do anything just yet. We are obviously saving. That's going up and up and up. Why is that? That's, that's literally gone up 5 billion in about it's sub half an hour of playtime, by the way, guys. Hmm. Wonder if that's like a dependent on your GDP. Let's go extra army XP, 70 day focus there. Pretty uh, run of the mill focus. We're going to recognize the Republic of China. I feel as though that's uh, the right thing to do. They love me. They love me for it. We recognize them. And in fairness, they have zero debt, which is good. Wow, I just realized, right, like, obviously China's very rich or pushing towards becoming, like, super industrial. But because China's so big and has so many people, their GDP per capita is four and a half thousand dollars. It's pretty wild. Pretty wild. So we did say we want to go for um, a bit of nuclear research in our next focus so let's write that down you see the reason i write all of this stuff down guys if you don't know um one of like in in my two-year break it, a lot of you are new around here so you don't really know but i was away for like two years um i, I was struggling a lot with my mental health but it seems that because i struggled quite a lot with it um I struggle to remember things that just happened. I lose my train of thought uh, quite easily. Um, 
it's it's almost like early onset um, short term memory loss, and it's frustrating. Uh, and I know it could be for 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 you guys as well. So bear with me if if anything like that happens. When I do lose my train of thought from time to time, I know it's happened a couple of times, but you don't really know as to why. So, I'm wondering here, because it's enabled, does it mean that, like, it's not going into my net income deficit, it's just going into, a, like, an... Or is, or is this number ticking up? Let's have a look here, see if we can see the ticking up. And you got to remember, guys. Yes, yeah, so that I, that is going up. Okay, okay. So yeah, I'm happy with with that going in uh, into the just the investment pool. Um, but yeah, it's it's lovely learning this mod for the first time. Actually sitting down for long periods of time and figuring out what's what, basically. What is what. France has, holy shit, they earn more from investments than they actually do their own country, like net spend. Let's propose a trade agreement with France. Now we've got some big trade agreements with like the big three in Europe, Germany, France, and uh, the UK. Be great to get like a, a trade deal with Italy. I don't see any reason why not, so we'll we'll go ahead and do that. Then if we go to trade, see what's what. We're still exporting steel to Sweden. Exporting tech metals to Germany and the Czechs. Exporting light metals to Turkey. And that's 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 good for me. Getting some extra sieves from some traded goods. Now a lot of you are still kind of like, well, what are you gonna do, military wise? Well, we can't really do much, if I'm honest with you guys, uh, at the current moment in time. Slovakia is free of debt. They have zero debt. Oh my gosh, did they literally just become a nuclear state right now? That's a, it's a big W for for our boys over in Slovakia. And we're getting closer and closer and closer to that 30,000 mark. Lovely jubbly is what I say to that. What does move our embassy to Jerusalem? What does that mean? Does it because technically people who recognize the Polish state, right? There'll be like a Polish embassy in Belarus, Ukraine, Germany, Czech Republic. Like normally there's gonna be a lot of embassies like around the world. So does that just mean I'm going to have one in Jerusalem? Obviously, it's like part of a part of the world where it's it's not the not the greatest political climate. Let's uh, let's call it that. Sugarcoat it just a little bit. I think this we want we want to go down like the substantial safety net, which is what we had at the start. But I want to get to a point where our economy is booming, like booming, booming. Like, to where I can put this up, and it's going to cost us 900 million extra a week, right? We get, obviously, extra political power, uh, extra stability, that's the word, 
to a point where we're still making a billion and spending that. But I think for us to do that, I want some research first. And I know Lexi asked us to start getting rid of debt, which is obviously at 185 million. Um, but considering our interest rate is super low at the moment, there's no real reason to start whittling down that just yet until we've done what we want to do. Do you know, I am going to, I'm going to ask a question for those of you who got this far into the video, just to kind of see uh, if you want to re uh, interact with the videos, I'm going to ask a question. What is your favorite period of history? Um, that you l just love learning about, whether it's like everyone knows that period of history, um, or whether you just like you have like a fun fact about that period of history. I think for me, my favorite period is Pax Britannica, where that was from 1815 to 1914. A little bit of uh history for you, it was the second ever era where there was one global homogenon who kept all the other major powers in check because they were so strong. Okay? Uh, the only one before Pax Britannica was Pax Romana, or Romanium, dependent on the pronunciation, where it was the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire was so strong and at its height, no one dared to go to war with one another with fear of involvement of the Roman army the roman empire so that's my favorite period of history that kind of covers the uh, crimean war it covers the boer war it covers uh like a lot of the indian uh, uprisings and like the push into pakistan and um afghanistan in the 1800s as well and it covers i believe the first and second opium wars so it's a really lovely part of history to learn about uh because whilst it was very much like the, there wasn't a lot of big wars going on but there was a lot of very early proxy wars that were going on which were being funded by uh the uk and the british empire so yeah like i said what's your favorite part of uh what's your favorite period of history sorry let me know down in the comment section below So we're getting closer and closer to that one sieve being completed. Things are happening in the world. Finally, in, in literally 30 days, so in this episode, we are going to have... That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Our office sector in Slovakia is going to be built. They're going to be they're going to be typing on, on, on early computers. They're going to be using using Windows XP. They're going to be punching numbers and, and writing down on sheets of paper. That's right. It's it's so high-tech, it's unbelievable, folks. Now, it doesn't matter which one down here we go, because we're going to get the F-16, which is a multi-roll. So, we're going to go the MiG-29, because the MiGs are crazy. did say we want to go down nukes which is something just to consider whilst i'm looking at all these other things fuel game per oil is not that big of a deal right now um as well as like monthly population and stuff efficiency cap and base would be great but like stockpile wise we do have quite a lot of everything or we get in that way with some things anyway So I think, you know what? We're going to go down nuclear technology, 132 day tech, 1945 tech, and uh, get a nuclear program online. And there are um, ABMs, are hardened, hardened underground facilities that are used uh, as launch bases for land based anti ballistic missiles. Okay, and then you've got your tail battery, the transporter erector launcher. They're sites for mobile crews and ballistic missile bases. They provide the state with launch points for IR, 
IRBMs, GLCMs, and HSCMs. Now, I don't actually know what any of those are. ICBMs are intercontinental ballistic missiles, but I RBM inter inter regional ballistic missiles, maybe. And then the last two are cruise missiles, so global cruise missiles, maybe. Who knows? That's a little tidbit. If you know, drop a drop a line down in the comments. Let me know. But the nuclear reactor. Um, Provides the state with enriched uranium for use in nuclear weapons and or with nuclear energy. Okay, so the fourth gen multi-rolls are done. Could go down here. It's only 129 days. Or we can continue going down the 2000 tech. I think we go down uh, electronics get this decryption it's just it's looking at me funny chat it's looking at me funny just a little bit off so i want to grab that and then we can continue uh waiting towards these two techs and keep going down the industry tree because we're all about money let's go breakthrough priority for our for our guys and then planning speed. Because we don't gonna, we don't we don't want to go like um, switch that over as well. We don't want to go. Lost my train of thought, guys. Oh, fuck, man. Where was I? Can I try and refresh my memory? I, I genuinely can't remember. I do I do apologize, guys. I remember we were talking about division speed. Um, yeah, so we want to go breakthrough because at the minute, most of our army is going to be 20 width infantry. Whilst we do have APCs and MBT battalions and divisions, they're not the bulk of the army uh, at the minute anyway so thus we want these guys frontline troops to be able to pierce do more breakthrough uh, it's, it's it's a good it's a good thing all the way around France wants to produce something in Silesia sure thing homie in this playthrough Poland loves the French It's like, oh my gosh, you want to love us? Shot thing, homie. Do they, like, have a thing where... Like, even if they invest... They don't get influence? All of these I'm seeing is like they do get more influence, right? Hmm. Very odd. Very odd indeed. We're at 30 million. MiG 29s now get a research boost. Let's go the F 16s. I'm not doing too bad on influence either. Now let's just check. It hasn't jumped up from 40, 46 billion, which had just gone up to. It's at 48 billion now. We can technically take it. Um, we just go into debt. Just a bit more debt. Or we can upgrade the equipment. It's this one and the same. I think we go. Expand the laboratories first. 
do that in progress. So in 90 days, we lose uh, 48 billion. Or we invest, sorry. We don't lose it. We haven't just misplaced it. We're not the US government uh, in September of 2001. We know where our money's going. We haven't lost a damn thing. Could get combined arms specialists there for extra uh, army XP per day. Don't see any reason why that wouldn't be a good thing. Especially in our current state when we're actually not doing a right lot in regards to the military. You're going to be done in February. That's, what, three months away. And then at this current pace, you're going to be done in two years. Just shy of two years. Like 18 months. George W. Bush is now the president of the United States of America. Propose a trade agreement between ourselves and and the new government of the U.S. Could give them a bit of economic aid. A gift. Considering our GDP is now higher than theirs, which is good, naturally. Do that actually give economic aid if they want to? If they want it, they can take it. They don't want two point three billion. Okay, fair enough. Well, we'll continue to invest in you, Lithuania, regardless. Ba -ba -ba -da -da -da. I'm so glad we got like the corruption done quite quickly. So if we go to universal education, we spend an extra 1.6 million, or 1.3 million, sorry, 130 million in words. Which you can well afford. So let's allow ourselves to get extra stability. Research speed. Construction speed. Organization. It's great. It is great. Let's uh, let's do that. People can go to university for free, ladies and gentlemen. If you're going to ed educate yourselves here in the lovely lands of Poland. You will get yourself it for free. Don't matter who you are, what your background is, right? You get a lovely, jubbly, free education. Helps you improve yourself, helps us improve ourselves. Okay, so these guys now have an office. And we get an extra office sector and a sieve industry within the next month. <whistles> That's a lot of a lot of good stuff. We are really churning out our industry. It's great. Our, it's it's just. Go, go, go. No stopping for no one. Let's go down. Uh, motorized army. Get some research uh, ahead of time bonus for the vehicles.
Well, hello there, Gita. For those of you who are new to the channel, Gita is my tailless kitten. She's not a Manx. Uh, she's no longer a kitten, actually. She's two years old. But she's here chilling. She just come up to say hi to me. Uh, she likes to follow me wherever I'm going. Uh, she's been sat by my feet for the last hour or so. She just decided to get up and say hi and walk across my desk to go sit on the windowsill and see what's going on outside. But yeah, she was. she's not a Manx cat, because if you have a look online and look at Manx cats, they're born without a tail. Gida was born without a tail, but in her case, it doesn't make any sense. She doesn't uh, have any characteristics of a Manx cat, um, and her mother and father were both uh, tabbies. So, yeah, she's very fluffy, uh, but not like Manx, like just so much fluff she's more fluffy than usual but yeah it's a bit of a uh, bit of knowledge about you if you've got any pets let me know um, i love pets uh they're cute i've also got like a, a he's now 10 guys which is wild uh skittles he's a black cat 10 years old now um he's getting old he's tired all the time you know how it is with with those sort of things Farmers resist a get a a gary a gar agrarian reform. Small scale subsistence farmers have revolted and demand that a multitude of factors should be incorporated into rural development, citing that the neoclassical theory of on farm production has only brought hardships for those dependent on farm out inputs that are subject to market imperatives. State actors argue that transforming subsistence farmers into export-oriented producers would allow for the rural countryside to develop through marketization. So we have this thing where it's like the opinion of factions. So we have, in our country, we have international bankers, the clergy, and the farmers, right? We, if the farmers love us, we get extra people, max factories in a state, and tax costs less the bankers like us we get construction speed on offices foreign investment cost and duration goes down so it's quicker to build things and cheaper to build things and people like us more and want to buy our things um but so far i haven't seen like any reason as to like they're like super important so we're gonna go continue the status quo they both like us a bit more uh, that way we keep our good buffs and they're actually they've actually improved in that case um but with that being said we've I haven't even realized we've paused on the 1st of january 2005 so that's gonna be a great time to uh, end the episode here guys so if you have enjoyed please do drop a like down below subscribe if you feel like it it is free and you can change your mind at any time uh our millennium dawn playthrough here as poland comes out every single day at 12 p.m bst so that's british standard time uh, and i look forward to reading your comments and i'll see you guys in the next one take care for now bye bye